Hello there. Uh, my name is James Marcus, and it's my great pleasure to present the award in criticism tonight. Uh, I'm going to read the names of the nominees, and again, if, if they would stand, and uh, receive a communal round of applause at the end. Uh, our nominees this year are Richard Brody, Everything is Cinema, The Working Life of Jean-Luc Guitard, published by Metropolitan Books. Vivian <laughs> Gornick, The Men in My Life, published by Boston Review and MIT Press. <laughs> Joel L. Kramer, for my monies, The Life and World of Civilization, The Greatest Minds, by the way. Seth Lehrer, Children's Literature, A Reader's History from Lisa to Harry Potter, published by University of Chicago Press. And uh, Reginald Shepard, Orpheus in the Bronx, Essays on Identity, Politics, and the Freedom of Poetry, published by the University of Michigan Press. <laughs> And uh, the award tonight goes to uh, Seth Lehrer for Children's Literature. <laughs> and, uh, once upon a time, 2008 actually, a longtime scholar at Stanford published a magisterial study that began with these words. Ever since there were children, there's been children's literature. To the people of the NBCC board, it seemed as if Seth Lehrer, in his journey through centuries of what we shelved under that seemingly familiar genre, had been there since the beginning, watching wisely and from up close. In children's literature, uh, Lehrer brings to his subject both the critical acuity and unlimited openness it deserves. He places a complex literature within the history of childhood, a story both contested and blessedly clear. He takes into account the cavalcade of publishing history without permitting it to trample the imaginative transformations wrought by the books. He understands that his terrain includes not just books written for children, but books read to them. Uh, delineating, uh, delineating, um, <laughs> okay, Larry makes it all the way from Aesop to Harry Potter without relying on magic but just sound, common sense, informing profound erudition. Finally, he makes his case that children's liter exi literature exists as literature, that it has forms and genres, an imaginative scope, a mastery of figurative language, an enduring cast of characters, a self-conscious sense of authorship, a poetics, and finally, a, a deeply pleasurable prose style. Uh, we are honored to, uh, to, to honor Mr. Lairton. is that it's conventional at moments such as these to thank the little people. <laughs> in my case, <laughs> in my case, the little people include the imps, the gnomes, the elves, who populate the pages of my book, and who throughout the history of children's literature pepper the imaginations of both the childish reader and the adult my book is a book about not simply children's books as objects, but about the making of a literate imagination. And if there is a central argument or polemic that I stress now, in an age when books as physical objects are moving from pages onto screens, it's that there's no experience quite like that of holding a book in your hand, of meeting with your child over a book, and of falling asleep with the printed page. I want to thank many people. I want to thank my editors at the University of Chicago Press. And I want to thank in particular my mother and brother who have joined me tonight. My mother who took me to the New York Public Library when I was four and a half years old. And my brother who in his work as an artist and an illustrator has shown me new ways to see the world pictorially and imaginatively. Thank you all very much.